Previously on Hardliners, ah. Skipper Paul experiences his worst 72 hours at sea. It's an absolute nightmare. I just want to forget about it now. As his season goes from bad to worse. Two and a half grand's worth of gear gone. Making him question his ability. If this is the way that it's going to get, you be lining up a centre link. While Tony cleaned up at market. Great price. Very happy. <laughs> and Chug pushed his crew to the limit. Yeah, the deckies, they get pretty tired, but that's all part of the job. This time on Hardliners, Paul's run of bad luck puts his livelihood on the line. I could lose me boat, me house, and me family. Tony's frustration at a rival skipper boils over. Have a look at the oh, I'll just shoot down in between you then. What a <laughs> toss up. And Chug battles four metre seas. Look out, look out, look out! Mayday, mayday! This is longline fishing, one of the toughest jobs in Australia. The largest boat in the fleet, the San Rocco, has been at sea for five long days. The crew is squeezing a couple of hours of precious sleep after a gruelling 30-hour shift. It was hard going for the boys being up for 30 hours. By the time we finished winching and shooting away, they just couldn't wait to hit the sack. They all fell asleep. They were pretty knackered. Actually, they were pretty f actually. They were rooted. But now, Skipper Chug Lagana has a rude awakening. All right, boys. Okie dokie. Sometimes you're up for 48 hours, just non-stop going. But that's fishing. That's what you've got to put up with. Take the good with the bad. To get his weary men ready for the seven-hour winch up, Chugs made lunch. Give us up, mate. And invented a TV show. Hey, mate, I'm a chef. I should be on Australia's next chef. A rest stop. That's all we do out here. We fish, and then we eat, and then we sleep, and then we fish, and then we eat, and then we sleep. That's all. That punishing cycle is about to test the crew. A storm is on its way. It's going to be pretty nasty in the next couple of days. It'll be another long day and a long night tonight. We bugger all sleep again. This long line tuna season has been a disaster for the South Seas. Unless his luck changes, 31 year old owner and skipper Paul Lavelli will lose more than his pride. I've got my boat on the line, my family on the line, my marriage. I'm getting to the stage where I'm getting really fed up with the way things are going at this point in the season. I can't afford to keep having bad luck. I need to go out and nail it. Get up, boys. Paul knows tuna like water at 21 and a half degrees. But locating those warmer patches in a big ocean isn't easy. At the moment, we have a temperature at 20.7 degrees. The fish were swimming in 21.5. As you can see, I did a few circles on my chart plotter, trying to find the right temperature where the fish were living in. I'm burning fuel, I'm wasting time. It's costing me money. Paul is just stressing out, because he wants to find the fish, put the gear in the best spot. All skippers get the shit spot. A lot of frustration, they've got to catch fish to make money, keep us happy. Eventually, Paul finds a patch that's 21.6 degrees, ideal for tuna. It's that time again. Hopefully they're underneath us. The skipper decides this is where he'll put his 52-kilometre line in the water. OK, fellas, when you're ready, drop it in. We're out pretty wide here, so we're hoping that we can find them. Otherwise, we're going to have a big fuel bill. 280 kilometres north, skipper Tony Cross has broken from the pack to start fishing. As far as I know, we're the only boat 100 miles each way. For obvious reasons, it's a bit sloppy. And, um, hopefully we can find a feed. But then Tony realises he's mistaken. The Angelica has company. Suck it on. Another tuna boat is fishing just 500 metres away. A f cock. A gentleman's agreement means whoever puts their line out first gets the spot to themselves. I called him all this morning to see where they were. <laughs> he didn't answer his phone. 
And now he's coming down here and shot right down through our gear. Oh, he's yeah. Steve Alafos has didn't f ring anyone. I tried to call him three times this morning, never answered the f phone, and Eric's shitting in between us. Both our lines. Yeah. That's f man. You gotta cue me in, okay? A frustrated Tony manages to hold his tongue talking to the other skipper. Yeah, well, we're shooting away here too, so. Now, let's hope we don't tangle up. Yeah, I rang you earlier to see where you were, but didn't hear back. Nah, nah, didn't hear your phone. Uh, I think I've got room to go down inside. I'm gonna have to just hug me in between you, I suppose. Yeah, roger. Ah, f a f shit fight. A lot of prick. Oh, I'll just shoot down in between you then. What a f toss up. There's nothing Tony can do but hope the other boat's hooks don't tangle with his. Or worse, catch all the fish. It's done, it's done. Mayday, mayday! 440 kilometres south, the storm Chug was expecting is closing in on the Sano Rocco. Look out! Hey! Hey! Now the sun's going down, the wind's picking up. Should be double this by tonight. Now the boys will have to suit up because they're going to get wet. Put your wet suits on. Millsy's suiting up. The first fish hooked is a 60 kilo yellow fin. Just lift it up. Just lift it up. Ready? What's left of it anyway? That fish shag. All that line was tangled up because of a shark chasing the yellow fin. Bastard fing ate it. Cost us 500 bucks. <laughs> it's all right, just wait till I get him. It'll be his last tuna ever is. But sharks are the least of the crew's problems. The swell is now hitting a frightening three and a half metres. Yeah! Atrocious conditions for long lining. There's a lot of water on the deck, which makes things dangerous. You're pitching for two hours now. Only one fish. It's pretty shit. Hang on! Big, 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 big. The main thing on really rough nights is this sea door, it's, it's the most dangerous thing on the boat. That's where all the fish come through, that's where it all happens. And there's always that danger of someone going overboard. Fish! Oh, yellow belly! Come on, the hook's nearly out. Winds are now gusting up to 70 kilometres an hour. Look out, look out, look out! Mayday, mayday! But the veteran skipper laughs in the face of danger. <laughs> Especially when thousand dollar tuna are dragged on board. Fish! Go right there. That's how you gaff them. Here we go. Oh, mayday, mayday! But just as the crew get on a roll, they discover their line is cut. Probably the cut happened when a ship probably ran over the line, hooked it up. It could have been anything, could be a current. We're lucky we got the GPS beacons, we know where they are. That's us there, and that's where our beacon is down here. Seven mile away still, so it'd be another hour before we even get there. Despite being cold, wet and uncomfortable, the deckhands struggled to stay awake. Yes, it's turning out to be a long night. It's been a long day and a long night. After setting out 1,900 hooks, it's the moment of truth for the crew of the South Seas. The pressure's on Skipper Paul to end the boat's run of bad luck. This is what it all comes down to. What we don't catch, we don't get. So don't get paid, waste of time being here. Zero percent of nothing is nothing. Only a few hooks into the winch up, Paul feels something that gets his heart racing. Oh, that's a fish. Live well, yellow fin, eh? Yeah, yellow fin. What we want. The tail's a big fish when you're pulling your line and there's so much weight. And this fish here could have been sitting down at about 100 metres down, trying to get off. So we're slowly lifting them up. It's a monster yellow fin worth at least $1,000. We're about two metres from getting this fish up. Wait for the shot. Ooh. 
going under the boat. No, he doesn't want to get up. Shooter's been very patient. Right now, he's taking deep breaths. There's a fair bit of weight on that line. That's it. Get his head up. But just as the tuna nears the surface, it pulls away. Where is it? Where is it? Fish just dove into the prop. The crab. Yeah. Far out. Fish just dove into the prop. The fish is down here at the back. The South Seas crew have hooked a thousand dollar tuna, but the line is caught on the boat stabiliser. Yeah, the fish is on here, but it's caught somewhere. Feels like it wants to pop off, eh? Someone grab that, the main line. After giving the crew the runaround for 20 minutes, the fish is dragged back to the sea door. Right, you nearly got away. As soon as he felt the weight on, the, on, on him, he took off and dove straight for the prop. Sneaky one there, sneaky. 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 Nine times out of ten, you lose them fish. I've never seen that happen before. But my heart's in me throat every fish. With running costs well. of thousands each day, Paul hopes his luck is changing. It's a good sign, it's a good start. A good start that just gets better. Oh, beautiful fish. And better. Is there another fish coming here? Oh, my God. Beautiful, mate. Beautiful. Nice fish. That one's about 60, that one. Nice tuna there. Beautiful. Paul's only pulled up five of the 52 kilometres of line. This could be a record-breaking night. There's no better feeling than pulling in these massive yellowfin. They don't get much bigger. Yo -yo! Beautiful run of fish. Beautiful. Enough to put a smile on your face. But an hour later, it's a different story. In the last five, six miles of gear, 300 hooks, we haven't seen a tuna, so I'm not very happy with that. 250 hooks later, and still no more fish. Things are looking pretty fucked at the moment. Haven't seen a fish for ages now. I'm pissed off. I'm crossing my fingers, but it's not looking good. F mate. Time goes slow when you f catch nothing, that's for sure. While the first five kilometres of line hooked nine fat tuna, the remaining 47 hooked zero. Yeah, it's pretty heartbreaking. We got all our fish within a couple of hours of, of winching. The last four or five hours, we just got absolutely nothing at all. So something changed in the water. I don't know. We just have to try and find that good water again. Further north, rookie skipper Tony's plan to fish away from the rest of the fleet has come unstuck. Another boat shot pretty close to us. He didn't check to see who was around before he put the gear in. And it's just common courtesy to know who, who's around you and what, who's doing what. Not only are the two lines in danger of tangling, both boats are chasing the same fish. Yeah. What do we got now, Albie? Albie! You can't catch caught fish. That's what Paul taught me, Paul of the South Seas. You always got to be trailblazing. There's always another patch of water. And if you follow them, the best you can ever do is come second. Wait, fish coming. Need another albacore, I think. There's small fish, man. I don't like this. How you going, Dan? OK, Tony. You sound like old mate off The Sopranos. <laughs> hey, you fat Tony. Tuna, tuna pizza. <laughs> but it's no laughing matter when the deckhands tussle with a big tuna. Come on, get that gap at it. You got nothing in your hands, you fucking useless. Hook's out. It's that's bullshit! Bullshit! It's been a disappointing catch. A ton of albacore and a headache. A small pay packet for the crew. 
I've got to look after me boys now. I've got to give them a coffee each. And that's the trick to keep them crew. In the end, happy workers make your money. Don't shout at them too much. And um, make them money. Because at the end of the day, we all like a bit of money. Further south, a skipper chug searches for the Sano Rocco's cut line. We've got a vegan in 100 hooks in the water, another three mile a year in the water. We'll pick her up and we'll winch her back into the wind, so the boys are going to get wet again. Straight into a gale. Holy smokes. That's howling now. To keep his crew alert in the treacherous four metre seas, Chug has a strict drinking policy. Coffee, coffee, and more coffee. That's what we need. It's all right, I'm just going to put the brew on. Perfect storm. Don't miss it, whatever you do. That's it, good work. The Santo Rocco has landed just eight tuna at the end of a gruelling winch up. A poor result for 11 hours dangerous work. Knackered. Uh, we've been working all day, all night. Uh, not even sure how many days actually on the work. I'm just stuffed and time to go to sleep, I think. Next morning, after a tense trip, Tony steers the little boat Angelica into port to offload his catch. Tony's found that he's got the ability to, to be very sarcastic and make you feel this big as of late. But, um, yeah, like all skippers, the ego eventually goes to their head. That's all right, you just ignore him and keep on going. We're in. We're in. A lot of the younger fellas, they, they lose it. You know, their anger overtakes them. They can't control it no more and stuff. Us old blokes aren't much better sometimes, but, you know, you're eating at 2 in the morning, you're working at 3 in the morning. It's all over the place. And after a while, mate, it just gets to you. They're nice-looking fish. Yeah, I've handled me crew and they're doing a good job. Some of the other boats, they've got a stable crew. They've had whole teams they've had for over a year. But because I'm new, I'm struggling to get the boys to settle in and catch them fish and make them some money. They're coming together. I don't think they're bitching enough yet, but that'll come. <laughs> the South Seas is working a new patch of water Paul hopes will save his season from disaster. But all they're pulling up is Black Snapper. Number one, another Black Snapper. Every 200 Black Snappers is worth one yellowfin. All they are is work, really. Sharp little rays of teeth on these little critters. Chew the shit out of our lines, do heaps of damage. Halfway through winching in the line, it looks like Paul's chosen a dud patch of water. No point being here if there's no fish here. Oh, that's big too soon. Something here, yeah. There's something on the line here. I don't know. Claire? What do you got, Shadow? Hey. Feels weird. <laughs> hey. Well, we do. <laughs> well, I've never caught a tree yet. Actually, it's a four me one and a half. Oh, my God. Very rare. Can't say I've ever seen or heard of that. That's just what sort of night we're having tonight. A joke. With a debt of $1.5 million and the southern tuna season halfway over, time is running out for Paul. Yeah, I do have a lot of stress at the moment, especially being away from the family and the kids. My wife, we are making a sacrifice to get ahead in life, and if I don't perform and produce some good money, I could lose me boat, me house, me livelihood and me family. That's what it, that's what it's at stake at, at the moment. The South Seas is hauling in hundreds of empty hooks. Skipper Paul is frustrated and knows what his run of bad luck could mean. I could lose me boat, me house, me livelihood and me family. All he's caught tonight is black snapper and a plank of wood. So when Paul feels something pulling on the line, he doesn't dare raise his hopes. Yeah, on the next hook. Next one. Get ready. Better pick. 
Better fish, fire out. Yellow fin? Yeah, yellow fin. Oh, my God. You're on. That's what we want. F yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I like the look of the boat, this fish. Thanks, one. Oh, we're on again. Oh, it's on that one. Yeah, it's on this fly right, fly right. Fly right. Yep, I got him fit. Nice one. Big guy, is it? Yep. Nice oh, fish here. Oh, beautiful fish. Oh, Good tuna, Paulie. It's all action again here. Just picked up a couple of yellow fin, one after the other. Oh, cool. Come on, let's go. The boys are pumping, I'm pumping. We're all excited. Yeah, get low, get low on one. Pretty bossy. Just break the hook. Just break the gap out. Look out, the skipper's down. <laughs> Gotta get a arm it. It's all fun. <gasps> It's, it's a good feeling. It gets you excited. The boys just get keen. I get pumped too. Like, when you see 60, 70 kilo yellowfin landing on the boat, one after the other, you think to yourself, you're doing something right. Number 10 for the night. Yeah. We're back, boys. We're back. We are back, boys. <laughs> <laughs> After a punishing seven days at sea, the San Rocco finally returns to port. End up being a good trip. Can't complain. Even though he caught a disappointing eight tuna last night, Chuck's tally for the week is 54. What we got to do now is hope we get a good price for the fish. The total catch will fetch $33,000. Should keep the boss happy for a day. Tomorrow he'll be whinging again, as usual. Probably want us to go back out tonight, but I've got news for him. He can get F. <laughs> Chug's crew have survived on little sleep, so he's plotting a well-deserved break. We're hitting the pub tonight. We're not going nowhere. Get on the turbs. Won't be going out until tomorrow. Give the boys a night off. At the wharf, Chug checks out his catch. Tell you what, the beautiful fish, the best I've seen. They're all screaming for tuna up there at the fish markets now. They'll be cut up for sashimi this afternoon and tomorrow. Can't get any fresher than that. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Oh, Al. Drive the winch, mate. Paul is also supervising the unloading of his impressive catch. Huge fish. Just beautiful looking. 72.7. Yeah, mate, no, that's a nice fish. Good exporting fish. Oh, uh, we could see when we're catching them, they'll super fish. They're weighing in. Exactly what we expected, so big fish, big prices. Oy! You got a ticket to drive that thing? Because they're premium quality, Paul's fish have a 24-hour trip ahead of them. I'm going to take Paul's tuna from here to Coffs. I'll process them this afternoon. I'll then uh, put them in a truck, take them to Brisbane. They'll be on a plane 4 o'clock in the morning, and they'll be at Tokyo Market by tomorrow night. The haul will fetch at least $30,000. It's been a successful trip. Just what Paul desperately needed to get his season back on track. Oh, mate, for sure. You'll get good money there, for sure. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with this. This, this catch is the best of the season, I reckon. 